For those who are not deeply immersed in Stoicism, it may seem that the Stoics rejected emotions, striving to be indifferent and cold in the modern sense of these terms. However, the reality is quite different. I recently came across an interesting article by Dr. John Maserly, dedicated to this topic, in which he quotes John Sellers, a researcher at King's College London. He emphasizes that the Stoics never expressed their feelings the way we do. Today, the concept of emotion covers almost any mental reaction opposed to reason. In this context, the Stoics do not reject emotions, but rather passions, which is quite different. Emotions are natural reactions that we are not always able to control. For example, the reaction to an explosion. However, experiencing anxiety and fear at the thought of losing a job is already a passion. Feeling closeness and care for a loved one is an emotion, while dependence or inability to restrain oneself from violating one's values is already a passion. Passions can seriously cloud our lives, bringing a lot of travel. They make a person vulnerable, unreliable, and hinder the achievement of goals. This does not allow one to live in accordance with one's own values. Stoicism proposes to reject precisely the passions that are false concepts, based on unstable value judgments and harmful consequences. It is the passions that most often lead a person to sad outcomes and lack of control over one's own life. What are passions? The Stoics offered various classifications, but researchers have unified them into four main types. The first type is excessive impulse. The second type is impulse that ignores reason. The third type is false judgment or opinion. The fourth type is trembling of the soul. The first type can be compared to an uncontrollable run down hill, where it is impossible to stop the movement. Passions push you forward. However, they are temporary, usually stronger at the beginning and gradually weakening over time. For example, strong anger. The second and third definitions emphasize that passion distorts reason and contradicts it. Passion erroneously distorts the value of the object, then incorrectly directs our impulses to achieve it. For example, if we exaggerate the value of wealth and then excessively strive for it, we may end up in poverty. Or if we act on the impulse of anger, arising from the desire for revenge, we may end up in prison. In search of instant pleasure, we may lose a beloved partner. In such cases, passion is either based on incorrect reasoning or generates them. The fourth definition follows from the Stoics' view that passion has a physical basis and physical consequences, manifested, for example, in changes in heart rate and blood pressure. Thus, we say that a person succumbs to passion. Why can excessive emotions or passions be harmful? When we succumb to passion excessively, we make mistakes in assessing situations related to good and bad, as well as present and future. The point is that something may seem pleasant to us at the moment, but in fact it may turn out to be unfavorable for us. We may strive for something in the future, which may also be harmful. Similarly, we may think that certain actions have negative consequences in the present and experience suffering, even if these actions are actually beneficial for us. We may also fear something in the future, which may not happen or be not as terrible as we assume. In this way, passions can lead to distorted judgments and emotional distress. For example, satisfying the thirst for food, drinks and sex may turn out to be less pleasant than we expected. Therefore, it is unreasonable to risk more important things, such as health, in pursuit of them, or suffer from their absence. Also, the things we fear, humiliation, pain, anxiety, may not be as horrible and tragic as we assumed. Therefore, it is unreasonable to stop our life and fill it with fears. What is the role of emotions and passions? It is necessary not to completely reject them, but to strive for a balanced emotional life. It is important to think about joy, not just pleasure, about caution, not fear. Thus, the Stoics are against those passions that manipulate us, undermining our reason and will. Their goal is not to ignore the worries and avoid everything, but to act on the basis of reasonable consideration. Although we may aspire to running or lifting weights, it is important not to forget that excessive exercises can be harmful, for example, running on a too steep slope or lifting too heavy weight. 
It is obvious that the quality of life improves when reason guides us, and we do not become prisoners of our passions. Reflections on emotions and passions. People are living beings, and not robots, so emotions and passions are part of our human nature. Feeling emotions and passion is a normal phenomenon. However, an important condition is the ability to understand the causal relationships of the emergence of any emotion at a given moment. I think that initially an emotion appears, and then it can transform into a passion. But a person must control this process. In the Christian tradition, there is such a word, obsession. You can find many explanations for this word, but I will give the best interpretation in the context of our video topic. In our case, obsession is a mental state of a person who submits to any passion and then generates obsessive ideas and concepts. In such a state, a person becomes a servant of such ideas and concepts because his will and life forces will work to implement these ideas and concepts. Unfortunately, most often, these are insane ideas and concepts because they are based on distorted values or vices. To better understand how this mechanism works, I will give some examples from real life. Olivia, who loves social networks, became obsessed with the idea of popularity. Her emotions from likes and comments turned into a passion for creating the illusion of an ideal life on the internet. She became a servant of her virtual image, forgetting about real relationships and genuine emotions. Another story about Brian also looks dangerous. Brian, a successful financial analyst, became obsessed with the idea of financial success. His emotions from financial achievements turned into a passion for work. He became a servant of the idea that only constant career growth brings satisfaction. This obsession led him to ignore his physical and emotional well-being. In addition to these stories, you may have heard many cases related to fraud and deception of people. It is the fraudsters who skillfully use the mechanism that involves creating the necessary emotion, which then becomes a passion and an obsession. Such cases of fraud are often associated with offers of quick ways to make money or miraculous healings from various diseases. Fraudsters can cleverly exploit the desire of people to improve their material situation or get rid of diseases, creating the illusion of a unique and immediate solution. Therefore, in the real world, there are many traps, but your task is not to be a victim and learn to develop awareness and control over emotions and passions. Of course, passion for work, art, or any other activity can give life depth and meaning. The key aspect here is the ability to control this passion so that it does not grow into an obsession. When a person is able to manage his passions, it becomes a source of inspiration and positive energy. In the teaching of Stoicism, it is important to cultivate the virtue of temperance, to prevent passion from becoming a storm that sweeps everything in its path. Temperance, according to Stoic principles, is the ability to control one's passions and desires, not letting them dominate over reason. This does not mean a complete denial of passions, but, on the contrary, calls for moderation in their expression. In the context of work, art, or any other activity, Moderation can become a reliable guide between immersion in the process and maintaining inner peace. Striving for perfection in one's work, of course, is valuable. However, when passion turns into obsession, it begins to interfere with our inner balance. Temperance calls for awareness of one's passions, for a meaningful choice of time and energy invested in work or creativity. This allows avoiding excessive stress while maintaining the depth and meaning in what we do. When we gain the ability to manage our passions, we become free from their enslaving influence. This frees our mind for more creative thinking, makes us more resilient to life changes, and helps us to cope with difficulties with dignity and calmness. Thus, the virtue of temperance from Stoicism becomes the key to a harmonious and meaningful life. In conclusion, developing adequate values coupled with virtues is an integral part of the path to a conscious and balanced life. By setting clear goals, consistent with our beliefs and moral principles, we create the foundation for resilience in the face of temptations of passions. In practice, integrating virtues into everyday life, such as temperance, wisdom, justice, and others, helps us avoid extremes. Being able to balance passions and rational control, we gain the ability to make reasoned decisions, 
not succumbing to bursts of emotions. This also means that we do not simply obey our passions, but use them consciously, making them part of our creative essence. In the modern world, where information noise and emotional turmoil can easily distract us, it is important to maintain focus on our values and virtues. This supports resilience and harmony, allowing us to move forward with clarity and confidence. Thus, applying virtues in practice becomes a bridge to a wise and meaningful way of life, where balance and harmony serve as reliable guides to inner well-being. If this video was useful and valuable to you, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like it. I also ask you to write your thoughts on this topic in the comments. This feedback will help me a lot. I wish you good luck and see you soon.